What's going on everybody? My name is Anand. Welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on the MPI implementations in Fortran. So in this tutorial, we will be looking at some of the terminologies that are involved in MPI. Uh, and in the next video, we'll look at, we'll write our Hello World program. So I thought I'll clear this topic up uh, pretty, pretty quick because this comes, this becomes a bit confusing. Uh, especially if you don't uh, to understand the basics if, you, if this is not done you might find a little bit odd and uh, confuse every now and then so I thought this will clear up everything I made this presentation so that you clear up everything so usually I mean usually the first question you might ask is what is a processor in the in these things all right so processor is not is let me put it simple it's actually the process of your system no question asked it's as simple as that it doesn't have to be much complicated However, the remaining terms, the core, thread, hyperthreading, CPU and all of that, they become a bit confusing to you, confusing to confusing because they have they have modified the definition of it has modified significantly over the time period. So, yeah, so this is a simple schematic explanation of what the what and what these mean. I'll, I'll walk you through simple walk you through easily. So the CPU or the central processing unit is actually the heart and brain of a computer. Heart and brain of a computer. No, okay. That is the that is a core component of the processor. All right. So the CPU has three components in it. Three main components: the control unit called a CU, a memory unit called as MU, and the ALU, which is the arithmetic logic unit. Control unit takes care of the uh, monitors overall process. Memory unit has registers wherein the data is temporarily stored at uh, temporarily stored at remote. ALU has uh, has flops in it, and which does all the arithmetic and logical operations. All right, so these three work in tandem to uh, do all the processes, and that is actually the that is actually the CPU, and the CPU receives data through a, through a, through a stream, and it's called as the input stream. All right, now usually the CPU has one input stream and one output stream, so it has only one stream of data flowing in, and this is this is this stream is actually called as a thread. Okay, the reason why it's called as thread is because the the information comes in as a long string, or long string of data, or long thread of data, or thread of data and instructions. Okay, hence it's called as thread. Nothing more fancy about it. All right. Usually CPUs have one input stream and one output stream, so single threads. All right. Now, what a sing um, usually a processor in the olden days has only one CPU, so there was not much of a com um, complexity in that regard but in the but with the advent of uh, but with the advent of you know, the dual core processor part core processor and all they've slightly modified the definition usually one some pro process have only one cpu understood some processors these days have two pro two cpus or four or eight or 16 or whatever many numbers okay so some process have dual CPUs, for instance, Intel dual core, Intel core to dual, slightly older technology, but this is the oldest technology. This is slightly older technology, but still it's relevant here. Here in these cases, one processor has two cores. And what is a core? Core is actually a fundamental, fully functional and a fundamental part of a processor. That is to say, that is to say, if you take one core out and if you do a little adjustments to it, you can actually make it run as a single individual processor. Okay. Now you might ask, why don't you say two processes in a system? Well, they what they did is since the advent of uh, VLSI and improvement, continuous improvements in VLSI, very large scale integration, they're able people are able to reduce the size of the components significantly smaller without losing efficiency. And so earlier, if a processor used to take uh, take certain amount of space, you can actually make up the same processor several times faster yet talk much more efficient and se and several times smaller than the usual size so what people did is instead of making a processor a big instead of making a processor smaller they actually made the components smaller and then in the same place where you keep one big one big and uh, older processor you keep two or three or four uh, smaller processes and interlink them together and that interlink and they and they make them work together as a single entity and that actually becomes your processor all right that being uh, okay so visually to s explain it this is how it goes usually usually this is how the single core processor looks like but this is actually dual core processor essentially what you're doing is that here in the same space that you had for a single processor you reduce the size of the cpu uh, cpu co components significantly you just then you just place two cpus 
okay each of them can behave as a single processor all right you can put them together in the same spot as the big uh, original processor connect them together so that they behave as a single entity all right so that that by it has the same processor has uh, two components in it to put this simple imagine a one person having two one body having two heads two individual heads each head or each head or each brain okay is a single is a cpu simple as that so remember this way single core single processor has is like a one body one one body one head whereas a dual core processor is like two body um, one body two heads quad core is in a, in a, in, a, in a similar man in a similar manner it's like four cpus or four co uh, four cores embedded in the same embedded together in the same processor so that you have four four components in it like that right now here is the messy messy part usually a core has only one cpu in it all right usually core has one cpu in it but with the advent of a uh, concept called as hyper threading the hyper threading you make the, you made this a little the definition has been modified a little more a little more differently so what hyper threaded pro cpu looks like is as follows this is simple in outlook so within the cpu well, either what you do is you just keep a cpu and split the control units into multiple components control in memory unit and arithmetic logic units into multiple components or attach two smaller cpus and make them make them work make them work as a single entity so the uh, single entity here this is an example of a uh, two threaded cpu wherein there are two individual control units and each control unit has individual and corresponding memory units so zero corresponds to one set one corresponds to another set and each of them have each of them have a separate input stream and a separate output stream so this is actually hyper threaded Me reason is because it, it this cpu can take two threads or many threads of in, many streams of information so that's why hyper threaded okay so one way to put this is that it's is that you can say is that uh, hyper one hyper threaded cpu one hyper threaded cpu equals n single threaded cpus okay cpus okay so where n is the number of threading possible usually they have just two so one example here is the intel i7 processors wherein the intel i7 processors each processor has four cores okay so each processor so one body four heads and each head each processor has cpus or uh, each processors have uh, either have to either have two cpus in each cores each cores okay each uh, how do i put it's like this either each cp each core has two cpus or each okay that's how it, you can go about with it and then as a consequence there are eight threads in that regard okay so this is called as hyper threading then sometimes you can have three threads or four threads for a cpu process as well in theory but in practice it's not much i have i don't know whether they've done it or not there are certain process wherein they have six pro six cores and multiple threads and all of that so before you go about with all of this it's better to understand this to know to know these bit in detail to reinforce this idea a little more clearly look at this this is actually the intel i3 processors website and intel okay and look at the, some of the specifications here this is the intel core i3 processor with the specification 8100 it has 8 a 6 mb cache and 8 generation let's not worry about this but look at these two information it says four cores and two threads so this cpu has four cores okay and each core has a single thread that's it so it has it can in this machine so this cpu can give me four cpus four processing units all right now look at this mission uh, look at this process similarly similarly with just with this information i can say that it has four cores and four threads so i can have four c four individual cpus in it likewise over here check this out this is a hyper threaded uh, in all these cases these are single threaded C single threaded cpus whereas this is a, whereas this processor has dual threaded cpus okay, dual threaded i mean dual threaded cores here all the cores are single threads here the cores are two threads so each core has two input threads but at the end of the day you have four cpus in the four cpus here likewise in this case as well you have four cpus now what will, what i can do is i'll just go and remove this yeah now let me go back and type intel i5 processor now intel i5 processors 
let's look at the specification of that and I will also, also look at Intel i7 processors just to give you a idea now 8th generation Intel i5 processors now let's expand this now check this out this one has six cores and six threads different okay single threaded cores similarly to this one and look at this one this one is actually an example of a hyper threaded so there has four cores and each core has two threads so this is it has eight threads so ultimately here in this in this mission in this processor I, uh, I can find six CPUs likewise in this I can find six CPUs whereas here I can find eight CPUs so eight individual uh, processor that can work on work, that I can work on here is here this is an example of a single threaded uh, i5 processor wherein there are four cores and uh, each core has a single thread so I can find four CPUs in that in this regard so if whenever you're buying, going to buy a new computer or going to get a new laptop or something like that, uh, have these uh, specs in detail, have these specs so that uh, you, you can make a much better informed decision. All right. Now let's look at i7 as well, just for the sake of completion. And i7 by default, uh, by default is actually a improved version of i3 and i5. Okay. So this this processor over here has four cores and eight threads, four cores and eight threads. So this is hyper threaded. Again, four cores, eight thread, hyper threaded, hyper threaded, hyper threaded. And again, this one is again hyper threaded. But look at this. It has six cores and twelve th and twelve threads. So each core has two threads, and there are I can get twelve CPUs from this machine from this processor. Similarly, here I can get twelve CPUs. Here I can get eight CPUs, and this is okay. What you notice over here is that is that i7 in general is a hyper threaded processor whereas i5 and i3 are in general a single threaded processor and you can get a hyper threaded for higher specifications higher specifications all right now in my system i would does i would suggest you open up a system monitor or a task manager task manager and you can see it for yourself in I'm using Ubuntu and in my system I uh, in my system I have my configuration my configuration is as follow um, let's see what was it um, okay fine fine okay so this is my configuration so my processor is uh, it's an old system so it has in, in Intel Core i7 3160 uh, 3610 QM CPU okay and it has and and it has uh, 613 i mean eight uh, i mean eight eight of them so this is actually an i7 processor so it has it's a quad core system with for two for, uh, with uh, and hyper threading so as a consequence as a consequence i have four cores in my system four cores in my system and each core has two threads hence i get eight cpus running running simultaneously all right i suggest you open up a system monitor or task manager in your laptop or machine which you're running and see this for yourself and uh, see what see what you're doing see how is it and uh, we will come back to the system monitor thing every now and then during our programs to visualize this entire process to get a feel for this process so that's it so what i would say here in this part is um what is it what I say in this part is before you uh, before running the code, it's good to know these details and it help you to understand this a little better. And of course, the terms we always look we start, we talk, uh, we talked about it. And here's the thing: process. Process is nothing but one instance of your program running in a processor. Okay, always you should always one thread means one process. One process, depending upon the process architecture one the core equals n processes okay so if you have a quad core let's say quad core let's say and in each core in quad core each quad core let's say and the the cpu i mean the cores are single threaded then you have four processes four processes okay like that you got the hope you get this i hope you get this idea fine and now uh, other terms uh, so up to here this all are, is this are on the hardware side and process it's a software part so, software side okay that's interesting and this is actually the software side the other terms that uh, you have to keep in mind while write uh, 
the program in MPI is actually the communicator, communicator size, and rank. Okay, that's uh, this will be the last of it. In this okay, communicator is actually an object that collectively represents a group of processes. By default, the uh, the communicator that you have in in MPI is MPI com world. Okay. That's a default global communicator, it's called as a global communicator. And there is a number called as communicator size. If this is actually the number of processes running, running uh, that is under the, that is under the MPI com world. Rank is nothing but the process number or the ID of the pro process number or the process ID. All right. And uh, this is how our MPI program actually works. You start the program, you end the program and in between you start, you put all the de data declarations you want and then you initialize MPI okay create a commutator size set the commutator rank run the code and then after you do all the MP, uh, all the codes and stuff uh, all the run the code and here you specify the all the other program all the other mpi parameters and whatever whatever you want you finalize the mpi and then you end the code all right so that's the flow chart and with this i'm stopping the stopping in the next video i'll talk about uh, writing a first hello world program all right so what I suggest is that keep an idea of what's actually happening and have a, understand all these terms real clearly. All right. And I'll see you all next time in the next video and uh, we'll start uh, we'll start writing and get our hands dirty. All right. So, so see you all then.